All right. Well, we're going to create a polygon cube. I'm going to scale it up. And today, I'm going to go over creating lights. So you go under Create, Lights, Ambient Light, which is kind of like the sun. It's going to cast light in all directions. You're going to lose shadows and all that good stuff. A directional light, which is kind of like a, um, a flashlight. It's a really good way of looking at that. It's a direct beam of light in one spot. A point light, um, it's kind of like a focused ambient light, a little glowing thing, like a candle burning or light bulb. Spotlight, that's kind of like the flashlight. It's kind of like a street light. You know, it sh shines one circular pattern down on the ground. Area light, um, pretty much will fill a certain area with the fall off around with light. It's square. It's like, to me, it looks like one of those shop lights. It's fluorescent, big square lights. And a volume light that's lighting inside of like a volumetric shape, like a, a sphere or something. But we're going to use just a directional light. They're pretty versatile. So we created it. And then you see my little icons popped up, but we can't see it. But if you really want to see where it created it, you can hit 4 and go into wireframe. There it is. It just it got created at the center of the world there, the very center. So we just pull it out. We can show it back. Okay. So. Um, what we can do with this is just pull it towards us a little, pull it above, and so we got a light coming kind of a little bit above uh, the cube, <gasps> and we're in front of it. Now we can control where this light is shining at. If we come in really close and look, you can see the little arrows on the direction only showing where it's, the light path is going. If we hit the T key, you see that this little thing here pops up. This is the thing that will change the direction of the light. So we just pull it down. We want it shining right there on our cube. Right. A little trial and error. And pretty much it's shining right there in the corner. All right. Now that we got our light in the scene, we will just get it where we can see it good, and we'll just hit the render button and just render it out. And there it is with some default lighting on it. Really fancy, right? Okay. Well, now, if we want to do the standard lighting system, we will do three point lighting. We have this light above it, that's our key light. We'll create another light, another directional light, which is down inside there. This will be a fill light, so it's going to go kind of below it and kind of just shine up at it a little and just kind of fill this, the sides of it in with light from the bottom. And then there is a backlight or a rim light or whatever they want to call it, but it puts kind of like a um, puts kind of like a, a rim of light around the actual the backs it lights the back side and you wouldn't think that would be very important but it actually makes it, it makes it look really cool and that is like standard three point lighting for pretty much everything the backlight back there in the rim light of course is going to be dependent on where my camera is going to be seeing things and it's definitely behind it so we'll just try to render it again And we got pretty nice even lighting on it. Pretty nice even lighting on that cube. And um, we can actually do a thing called um, an IPR render, which is next to the regular little render thing up here. It says IPR on it. And that's going to let us interactively see what's going on when we make these changes. You're actually going to see them. It renders up normally. When it's done, you'll drag a square around the area that you want to work on, which we just want to see what the effect on the cube is. Okay. And then I'll kind of just put this off to the side a little. And then I'm going to look at my scene here. 
and I'm going to start with my key light which is the main light shining down on it right up here I just clicked on the this third symbol from the left it opens up the attribute editor and I'm just gonna like take the intensity is what I selected and make it 1.5 and you notice it's updating in my render here what helps to see where your lights are going is in the, under the color thing click on it we'll make the key light red so we can see what the key, key light is affecting and it's really affecting the top there now we're going to go down here to our fill light, select it. I'll make the fill light blue. So you can see it's taking its sweet time. It kind of turns it actually purple. So we're going to turn the fill down to 0.5. And then the backlight which we're not really seeing a tremendous amount of we'll make it green and in this image you really with what's going on here you can't hardly see it anyway. so we'll put these color these lights back to their default values for color which is white fill light back to white I won't see um, and there we have it there you have your just nice lighting on the cube now um, we can go create polygon primitives in a plane basically and it created it it's in there see it Obviously, it had a few levels of subdivision on it. Move it up a little. Now, we have a ground here. And if I just render it like this, no shadows are happening. We're not getting a lot of realism there. I hope you caught that. So, we select the light, this key light. It's the one we want to shoot the, the shadows down. It's going to shoot the shadow based off of this. I'm going to go over here. We can hit Control A or go up there and click that for the attributes. I'm going to go down to Shadows tab. And we're going to use Depth Math Shadows. And for right now we'll stick with the, all the default settings. And we'll see what we get. And we got a shadow back there, but um, we didn't see it very well in that render. So we'll try it from right here. And we'll see if we can see. There we go. And now we're getting our shadow on the box. It's getting there. And of course, we can go in and we can, with the light selected, I have that light selected, Control A again. I can go in. And if I increase like the filter size, that will start to actually put a, uh, I hope it's noticeable in here, but it will start to put a blur on the shadow. It won't be as crisp and hard edged. Notice that the edge is actually a little blurry now. And on this video it probably doesn't show up that well. There's actually a little bit of shadowing going on around here too. And um, yeah, that's about it. That's how to set up some simple lighting.